confessing to the fact that they're making money. You remember the next to the last one, the one that was STEM Express, the CEO of STEM Express? Of course, they were the ones who went to court to stop the video from being put out. Very good reason for that, because on that video, STEM Express is talking to the undercover reporters. And what she says in that, she says, well, we want to make sure that everybody is making money, you know, that you're making money, that we're making money, that the abortion clinics are making money. And the other lady who is feeding her the, the uh, question says, um, yeah, I, I want to make sure that's happening because, I, you know, some of them, I, I just want to make sure that they're not getting uh, that they're not getting shoved to the side. And she goes, wait a minute, do you know anybody that's not making money off of this in the abortion clinics that are not making money off of this, says the STEM Express person who is buying all this stuff? And she says, uh, no, no, I don't. She goes, yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. No, though, I don't know anybody that's not making money off of this. We need to make sure that they make money off of this, that they profit off of this. And now this is what the senior medical advisor for PPFA is saying. This is systemic corruption. They're talking about how this would be a PR disaster. They're talking about how they have to be very careful. They have to pass this through legal. This is planned, okay? It's not planned parenthood. It's planned abortion, planned criminal activity. And when you see... GOP presidential candidates like John Kasich saying we don't want to have a shutdown that is predicated on withholding funding from Planned Parenthood. Do you understand how corrupt that is? Why is he even in the debates? Why is he even running? Who supports him in the GOP? This is something, this is one issue that I thought the GOP defined itself by. But of course, John Kasich can say not only is he not calling for these people to go to jail, he can't even bring himself to muster the backbone to have a fight about whether or not they're going to get federal funding. Isn't that amazing? I find it amazing. I hope you find it amazing. Listen, this is what the guy who's doing the, uh, the undercover videos, the, uh, the Center for Medical Progress says. He says Planned Parenthood runs their abortion and baby parts business in the open, in the open, disregarding the law and should be prosecuted immediately. Their taxpayer funding should be reassigned to federally qualified health centers, which provide more and comprehensive health services at locations that outnumber Planned Parenthood 20 to 1. Exactly. Exactly. This should not even be an issue of discussion. I mean, even honest people who have supported abortion and who continue to support abortion. Like people like Camille Paglia said, this is an outrage. This has to stop. I mean, even she's an honest, I disagree with her on a lot of issues, but she's honest about this stuff. And she says, it's an outrage. Why isn't this being shut down? Why do we still have Republicans who are in office, who are running for the highest office, defending this practice, defending subsidizing this practice? It's absolute insanity. Think about the healthcare industry. There was this article, and it was just a, a passing article. It was on uh, Daily Mail. It's one of these lifestyles, the rich and famous. It's about a vaccine billionaire in India, one of India's richest men, according to the Daily Mail. They say he just bought the former U.S. consulate in Mumbai for $113 million, making it the most expensive residence sold in India's history. Now, this was a former mansion of a Maharaja. It was then bought by the U.S. government, used for their embassy. And now, who gets it? Cyrus Punawala, a vaccine billionaire. That's how they continually refer to him as a vaccine billionaire. They don't point out uh, they're not anti-vaccine by any means. But you understand the vast amount of money that is being made, don't you? This is just a guy... In India, making vaccines, uh, making profits off of vaccines in India. And he makes enough money to buy the most expensive house in India's history. Vaccines are big business. You need to understand that. It's a big business in America with no downside. Because going back to 1986, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, not Ronald Raven, Rick Perry, but Ronald Reagan, the guy that you're going to hear his name mentioned over and over and over again tomorrow night, Ronald Raven gave the vaccine industry a blank check to do whatever they want and not get harmed with it. They said so many people are bringing up lawsuits from uh, adverse reactions with vaccines. 
we're going to have to give them legal protection. And that's one of the reasons, as we mentioned on this show many times, it's one of the reasons why we now have everything being mandated, why they have turned away for the most part from doing any antibiotics research. They announced that a couple of years ago. And then it didn't take very long before they started using government to say, we're going to take away your informed consent. We're going to mandate vaccines. We have no liability for vaccines. That's where our profit is. It's all about the money. They are taking away your freedom to make profits. And when we run through these Trans-Pacific, Transatlantic trade agreements, quote unquote trade agreements, that's precisely what they're going to be doing. They're going to be consolidating their profit industry and they're going to be pushing it through in countries that are not as friendly to their regulations, to their uh, GMO products, to their vaccines, to their pharmaceuticals. Any country that has an issue with that, they're going to use this transnational quote unquote trade commission to strong arm this through. That's what this is all about. This is something that's being produced by a few globalist billionaires, a few very wealthy industries, and they are going to make sure that they grease the skids on legislation. Now, along that line, I saw a very disturbing, very disturbing article that came out yesterday. And many of you know that I, I really agree with Rand Paul on many, many issues. I don't agree with anybody on everything. Let's just understand that. And I'll point out where we disagree. I, I don't want to be too negative. We point out when we agree with people. We point out when we disagree with people. I think Rand Paul has been fantastic in terms of standing up against civil asset forfeiture, standing up for the rule of law. Why can't the Republicans get behind standing up for private property? Why would they ever support a policy that takes away your private property without due process? People who lose their property because of the war on drugs, civil asset forfeiture, in most cases, are never even charged with a crime. They call it a civil asset forfeiture because if it was a criminal asset forfeiture, they would have some splaining to do, okay? They would have to explain why they're not giving you your due process under the Constitution. But they say it's a civil action. It's not a civil action. The war on drugs, they say, is a criminal action. Nevertheless, they lie about that. Then they lie when they charge the inanimate object. It's the U.S. government versus an airplane. They take that away. Or they say it's U.S. government versus your house. They take that away. They charge the inanimate object as if it was a person. Now, when we come back, I'm going to tell you what I don't like that Rand Paul has just done. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the InfoWars News Wrap-Up. I'm David Knight in this fourth hour of the Alex Jones Radio Show. We've been talking about the news coming up. And, of course, tomorrow we're going to have our money bomb and... Part of that money bomb is going to occur tomorrow night. We're going to have the next GOP debate. So we'll be covering that live as well with our comments when it happens. And I think there's something that we need to keep in mind when we look at all of these candidates. You know, last night as uh, Joe Biggs went to the uh, rally in Dallas and he and Alex Jones were talking about the massive fanatical support that we saw there in Dallas. That's something that concerns me, quite frankly. Because I don't think any of these candidates have been vetted enough to deserve that kind of fanatical support. That's been my point all along. I don't have so much of a problem with any of these guys. Well, I have a problem with a lot of their issues, just as I mentioned John Kasich. I'm going to mention one about Rand Paul that I have a problem with, an issue that a position he has on an issue. But we need to look at these guys and not get totally caught up in idol worship. Listen to this headline. This is what we've been saying all along. This is exactly the way I see it. From the Washington exam Examiner, at the Trump rally, Republicans experienced Obama-sized crowd and excitement. Do you remember when Obama was running eight years ago? Remember the women fainting in the crowds? Have you seen the pictures, the expressions of the women who are basically fainting for Donald Trump now? It is absolute insanity. This cult of personality that we build up around leaders or potential leaders, it is very very dangerous. We were concerned about this when we saw it with Obama, not because we disagreed with his politics, but because of what it said about the American people. That was, to me, as frightening as what Obama was saying that I disagreed with, was the spirit of the American people, how they viewed the whole process, how they could get caught up in this cult of personality, in this branding. I think it's very, very dangerous. I don't like to see it happening on the left, and I don't like to see it happening on the right either. We're better than that. We need to rationally look at what they are saying, and we need to understand that we are not going to have our freedoms handed to us on a silver platter by anyone, not by Donald Trump, 
Not by Obama, for sure, okay? This isn't going to happen. As Jefferson said, we're not going to be transported on a feather bed to a state of liberty. You have to do it at the local level. They want to distract you from things where you could make a difference at the local level. They want you to focus on these national races where you're not going to make any difference. There was an interesting article that I saw retweeted by Max Kaiser about this uh, new Marxist who's become head of the Labour Party in the UK. And there was an interview with him and another guy who was very high up in the Labour Party. And what they were saying was, don't expect change to come through the parliamentary system. These are guys who are at the top of the parliamentary system on their side of the issues. They said, don't expect change to come there. It's going to come through working with your labor unions. It's going to come through working at the local community, doing it at the local level. How many times have we heard the socialists say that all change, in all politics is local? Think globally, act locally. They are killing us, those of us who agree about individual rights and liberty. We are getting killed by the socialists on these issues. They are having full sway because they're smart enough to work at the local level, and we aren't. We need to work collectively for individual rights. Right? I remember an interview when I had with uh, G. Edward Griffin, the guy who wrote The Monster from Jekyll Island, a great libertarian, great thinker, understands the big picture. And he kept saying that. He says we need to work collectively for individual rights. That's what the founders did. Why can't we understand that? We are not going to find some savior. It's not going to be Donald Trump. It is not going to be Rand Paul. We may agree with Rand Paul on 60% of the issues or 70% of the issues or whatever. Fine, support him. That's a move in the right direction. If you agree with Donald Trump on 70% of the issues, then support him. But understand that these people are not going to be right on every issue. Here's one for Rand Paul that I sincerely disagree with him. He goes to AgriPulse and he talks about the GMO labeling issue, which just came out. Remember that? We've all called it the Dark Act. But what Congress called it was the Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act of 2015. It's not accurate. It prohibits any states from mandating that GMOs be labeled if they're put into the product. It prohibits that. It prohibits any state legislation of labeling. Now, Rand Paul says to the agribusiness people that he's talking here, he says, well, I'm very confused on this. It confuses me because on the one end of this, I, I don't want to see the rights of the states under the 10th Amendment taken away by some kind of a federal rule that prohibits it. But on the other hand, I don't want to see that we've got uh, worse rules being, being hand handled at the uh, local level. So he makes a pragmatic argument against the Constitution. And then he goes on to say the talking points of Monsanto. He says the labeling requirements are enormously expensive. They just add to the cost of food. Somebody who's poor can't buy as much food because of labeling requirements stuck on these things. Look, if you can't afford to put the label on what's on your food, if you're ashamed of it, don't put the ingredients in there in the first place. Stay with us. We'll be right back with your calls. Welcome back to the InfoWars News Wrap-Up. I'm David Knight on this fourth hour of the Alex Jones Radio Show. Just before we went to the break and ran out of time, we were talking about Rand Paul's support for the, quote, Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act of 2015, which is neither safe nor accurate. What it is is an effort to prohibit the accurate labeling of food that is unsafe at the state level. So it denies the Tenth Amendment. But he says he's torn on this because he thinks voluntary sounds good, but then the federal government saying the states can't do what they want, that bothers me. But I don't want to, um, th these are bad rules. So he puts out an argument that I don't like these rules because they're bad. Why are they bad? Well, he says because it raises the cost of food. Look. These labels are, they put labels on all their food as it is now. They have requirements to put labels on their food about all kinds of things. They're constantly changing the labels to tout their new features. The free market is about serving customers, not deceiving customers. Okay? We need to understand as libertarians that government is set up to stop force and fraud being used against people. Fraud is when you're not honest about what's in your food. They know that the customers don't want GMO in their food. So they could try to educate people or they could try to deceive people by not telling them what's in their food. If they think they've got something that's safe and effective, let's have that argument. Let's have it out in the open in the free market 
of ideas. Let's not suppress the information because